testing. Hi, Deborah. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Your your phones are muted. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Do you think we can change the set the waiting room setting? Um, I could. We can just press admit all when we want to oh. admit people too. Oh, okay. So we don't have to admit each one at the same time. Perfect. Cool, I can be in charge of that. Okay. Well, I didn't want to admit too many people in, although I guess they could chat if you wanted to beforehand. But um, oh, I was thinking it would be better waiting? to- Oh, I can't There's... see. Oh, okay. Can you make me a co-host? Yeah. Oh, cool. Ah, uh, yes, I see the waiting room now. Oh, fancy. Yeah, we can probably, I don't know, do you want to let them in now? Five minutes? Um, we could. I can do that. All right. Hi, Gail. Hey everybody. Mary, hello, your mask is so pretty and fancy. I love it. We're going to wait for about another five minutes to see if more people show up before we get started. Hey Gretchen, how's it going over there? Oh, bummer, Helga. Helga put in the chat that she has no video or mic on her work computer. Mm -hmm. So Helga, if you have questions, just pop them in the chat and we'll ask them for you. That's like kind of a nice thing sometimes, <laughs> not to have a video. <laughs> I'm sure everyone's tired of Zooming. Okay, we've got some people trickling in here, but we're still gonna wait a few more minutes. 
There were about 40 that RSVP'd, so we're waiting for about we're 20 half, more. Half these right now. And I believe everyone's being muted as you come in, but if you want to unmute yourself to say hello, feel free. There are some comments in the chat. Molly said yesterday during ILL, she ate her lunch while listening, which is definitely allowed. So if you need to eat your lunch today during this meeting, feel free. <laughs> some solid multitasking, Molly, and you're still able to contribute to the meeting. I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm going to wait another minute or two. There's still some people coming in slowly. It's so different now to see everyone in their videos back at the libraries. I miss visiting all of your libraries. Be back one day. So everyone is being muted as they come in, but um, throughout the meeting, if you'd like to say something, feel free to unmute yourself to chime in. Uh, Rachel and I will also be monitoring chat to, uh, for responses and contributions, but you might get tired of hearing us repeat and read things out loud. So feel free if you're comfortable to unmute yourself. All right, Rachel, I think you can go ahead and get okay. started. I'll monitor the, the waiting room and keep letting people in. Okay, great. Well, thank you for coming today, everyone. Um, our agenda will uh, begin with a presentation on the results of the Rails cataloging survey. It will take about 10 to 15 minutes and um, we'll have an open discussion uh, just discussing anything that um, you're interested in talking about related to reopening the libraries and um, any staffing issues that you've been experiencing. And then we'll have time for any other topics that um, you're interested in. So uh, today I'm going to do a brief presentation on the results of the Rails Special Cataloging Survey. I'd like to thank everyone for participating in the survey. Although the questions asked if you were interested in Rails assistance, we are using the results of the survey to investigate if CCS can expand our services to include centralized cataloging in the future.
The first question was, what kind of cataloging tasks are done at your library? The majority of libraries in CCS work on all the tasks that were listed in the survey. The lowest percentage was for cataloging foreign language titles, only 75% of the respondents cataloged foreign language titles. Other tasks that were listed in the um, open-ended question text box were reclassification and recataloging projects, ILS data cleanup, authority control, withdrawing items, and acquisitions tasks. Question number two was how important are the following materials to be cataloged and processed at your library? So I've already highlighted the more important items in yellows to point them out. Um, the response really wasn't very surprising. Items such as print books, um, gift books, and rush items, as well as print journals and kits were viewed as either moderately or highly important. However, um, print monographs and rush items were considered the most important items to catalog. Question number three is, um, is your library able to meet the following cataloging needs of your collection? The question listed specific material types. Um, the majority of the libraries responded that they couldn't meet the cataloging needs of the collection. There were only several libraries that responded that they couldn't meet the needs for cataloging local history. Um, foreign languages and electronic resources, including um, in the response for other were AV materials and magazines, um, as well as comments on how CCS loads the electronic resources records. Question number four was, uh, what is the total number of titles that require original cataloging per year for your library. Half of the libraries uh, create 200 or less original cataloging records per year, while well, about 27% of the libraries catalog 100 or less records per year. Well, some um, only responded that they cataloged 10% or less, so we're unsure what that actual amount is, and six did not respond to that question. Question number five was, if your ca original cataloging needs are not currently met by staff at your library, what are you doing with items that need original cataloging? So you had several responses for this. Um, waiting for another cataloger to input the record into OCLC was most common, um, as well as um, adding the items to a backlog and then working on them as time allowed. One respondent uh, stated that a manager from a different department, such as the um, access services manager, does the original cataloging for the library. Um, and one library also outsourced a group of Spanish language cataloging um, to complete the original records. And um, other libraries responded that they do what they can, such as just creating a brief record if that's what they have the ability to do or just adding one to two subject headings. Question number six was, uh, please note any world language materials you acquire that regularly need cataloging and how often do you um, usually encounter those items? So Spanish is the most frequently cataloged foreign language. Um, other foreign languages tend to only be cataloged on a monthly or yearly basis, with Polish being cataloged um, more often than the other languages. Other languages that are cataloged by CCS libraries include Korean, uh, Russian, Chinese, Hindi, Japanese, Gujarati, Urdu, Hebrew, and Ukrainian. And the most common of those are Korean, Russian, and Chinese. Question seven was, please note any special formats or collections you acquire that regularly need original cataloging and how frequently do you encounter those? 
The material type that um, most frequently requires original cataloging is AV materials. However, uh, most libraries do catalog kits, objects, and local history or authors on a yearly or monthly basis. Other special formats that were mentioned include graphic novels, music CDs from their local concerts, and technological devices. Question eight was, has your library used cataloging maintenance center services for original or copy cataloging of eligible collections within the past year? Um, so none of the libraries have utilized CMC yet. However, one did respond at the end stating that they do plan to use CMC in the future. Question 10 was, how interested are you in specialized cataloging support from Rails? Only uh, six of the respondents stated they were significantly interested. 15 are not sure and uh, seven are not interested. Question 11 is, what are the top three cataloging needs of the library? So I analyzed the top three answers, all of, all of the answers together to analyze a total frequency of each response. Overall, the most important need is foreign language cataloging, and tied for a second was copy cataloging and original cataloging in general. And then third um, was kit and object cataloging, but I combined those answers into one category. So question 12 was please share any additional cataloging related comments, questions, or concerns that your library has. Uh, so these comments included a uh, concern for the large backlog of materials that need cataloging after the stay at home order is lifted, and a desire for foreign language cataloging training, and assistance with original cataloging of local authors if their collection increases. Um, as well as the comment that a library does plan to use CMC soon. So overall, the results really were as I would expect. Um, there weren't really any surprises. A separate administrators survey was sent to the CCS library directors. The last day for this survey was June 9th, which was yesterday. So after we uh, compare the results of both surveys. We may, do, we may have some additional questions for you that could help us investigate the feasibility of providing centralized cataloging services and what type of service model that CCS would like to implement in the future. So um, when we are ready to send out any additional surveys, we'll let you know. Um, do any of you have any questions? So feel free to unmute yourself and ask the question or type it into chat. No questions. Doesn't look like there are any questions, Rachel. So I think we can move on. Um, I will say that we are still waiting for responses to the, um, the administrative cataloging survey that we sent out. We've heard back from 18 libraries, so we're still waiting on 10 more. So if your library has not completed that survey yet, you might want to check in with your library director uh, and CCS will follow up as well. Next on our agenda is the open discussion. Um, so our questions for discussion are just in general, how has the reopening process been? And uh, how have the libraries uh, coped with less staff uh, working in the department as you return to work? So um, feel free to unmute yourself and uh, comment or uh, type any comments in the chat. a quiet group today.
I'll have to start calling on people. Hi, this question, is, the brave one. <laughs> you know, um, we're, our, our schedules kind of have been in a state of flux. Um, we've had, we've made ourselves team A and team B, um, and we're going to be doing that through the whole library on the theory that if somebody is taken out in team A, you still can have team B working in the library because they're on different days. So not sure how that'll work, but we are forming these. And um, we are, we um, starting on June 21st, we need to bring it, we're bringing in all circulation and um, tech services staff to be as many of their hours as possible. But because of this team A and team B, it's, um, it's interesting. It's an interesting challenge. So uh, team A, let's see if I can get my schedule, team A, uh, can come in on um, Monday and Tuesday mornings between 7.30 and 2, and Wednesday and Thursday nights between 3 to 9, and then on Friday they can have a whole day. And then Team B, it flips, so they come in Monday and Tuesday evening, 3 to 9, and Wednesday and Thursday morning, 7.30 to 2, and they work Saturdays. Um, so we haven't actually started this new schedule yet, um, but it, it will bring staff up to 33, approximately 33 of their 37 and a half hours. So hopefully with getting more staff in than we're getting now, uh, which is more like about 25 hours or so, it'll help bump up our um, cataloging uh, and other processes. Uh, more fully. Um, staff has been terrific. It's, it's, this has been a real challenge. We started accepting books, uh, packages from Baker and Taylor and Midwest tape now for, um, since about the beginning of May, I believe it was, if I'm remembering right. Um, so we're, we're proceeding okay. I think partly to some of the departments have not been ordering at the level that they would be ordering if they were in the library and start and some of that starting to pick up uh so it's we're managing um i expect a little bit of backup um and of course uh, this is the kind of when, when you have several staff work on the same material it, it can get bogged down on one level like the cataloging and then the data entry person or the person who's doing the stamping and labeling may be waiting for those materials a little bit longer. So we're, we're working some of those kinks out. So that's how it's going in our library. But again, it's, it's um, a very patient staff who's gone through a lot through this COVID. Uh, Penny from Crystal Lake chimed in in the chat saying that their staff won't be in the building until next week. And their plan so far is to have four teams, one for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and then rotating Saturdays. Um, that'll help minimize the number of staff that are actually in the building. So technical services staff will be in one day a week, one, one technical services staff member each day. Wow. So a little bit different from um, Park Ridge's method yeah. of staggering staff. Um, does anyone else have any strategies or, or teams that they're working with when it comes to staffing technical services at their library? Several. I do. Victoria. Victoria, go for it. I was wondering who for V was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, anyway, <laughs> I forgot to change that. Um, so what we're doing right now, we have four teams at our library. Um, so there's teams one, two, three, and four. One goes in on Monday through Thursday. Team two is Friday and Saturday. And then team three is Monday through Thursday. Team uh, four is um, Friday and Saturday, and they rotate. And that's based on, I forget which study it is, but for the incubation period, if someone does go down. Um, the Saturday and Sunday hours are more, or, I'm sorry, Friday and Saturday hours are more for um, part-time staff to fill in. Um, so half of the, half of the team is in right now. Um, so Jamie's leading one team. Um, I'm leading the other. I was in all of last week by myself. So I was part of, I was team one. So 
uh, prepped everything to get ready. Um, pa patron service, a patron services team is in this week, admin, IT, maintenance, and tech services. Next week, um, we're going to be starting um, a rollout of no contact um, uh, holds and pick up for uh, patrons. So we'll be doing old holds first and then doing a um, doing um, other service where they can call in and place items on hold or request items on. And then um, we're also with our digital services department going to be doing one-on-one um, -on -one computer appointments. So we're working on getting those scheduled now. So that's what's going on at Niles. Victor, I have a question for you. Yeah. So when, um, so with your teams, for example, team one and team two, is that weekly then? So if you're on team one, you'll go into work this week and then next week you will not go into the library? Correct. So it's like it's A and B weeks and then mm -hmm. like team one and two is on week A, um, team three and four is on B and then it just rotates A and B. Excellent. That makes sense. So we're getting a lot of comments in the chat about libraries who have um, split up into teams as well. Lori from Algonquin notes that they were split into three teams with two technical services staff per, per team. So one works Monday, Thursday, one works Tuesday, Friday, and then the other is Wednesday and Saturday. So their teams are broken up again by day of the week. Um, their building hours are 10 to 6 on weekdays and 10 to 2 on Saturdays. So they are expected to work 60% or more of their hours each week, either in the building or at home. Uh, and they did just start curbside this week. Helga um, at Morton Grove says they just started back this week and they're working 50% at home, 50% in the building, one staff in the department at a time. Uh, and they are aligned with their CERC team so that they can help assist when, when the library starts curbside pickup. Um, Xiao Chen from Lincolnwood says that when they're not working in the library, they do have to take vacation time. Um, so have to use up some of their PTO. And if they've already used up their vacation time, then they'll be without pay if they're not actually working in the building. Um, ooh, so many, so many chats coming in here. Um, feel free as well to unmute yourself or pop in any questions for the libraries that have responded. Lori says that at Northbrook, tech services started coming back last week. So one team works in the morning, one team works in the afternoon with three people maximum, maximum in the department at a time. So next week, they're going to try to bump it up to four people. Admin, IT, maintenance, and CERC, so the other library departments have started working on a similar model. And they've started accepting returns as of yesterday, but on a last name basis. Um, so then Will Med, so Gail's chimed in as well. They have three technical services teams that go in two days a week. So a Monday, Saturday team, Tuesday, Thursday, and then Wednesday, Friday. And they started parking lot pickup last week. And I know you guys over at Wilmot, you guys have been busy with all your holds. Um, at Northbrook, Hours are 8.30 to 5, and staff are expected to work 50% at home and then 50% at, at the library. Um, at Lincoln, which our Chen, she added that the reference department, youth and teen, are working at home most of the time. Uh, and then Kathy chimed in as well at McHenry. So in tech services, they have two teams of three people. One's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and the other is Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So they're combining both on-site work at the library with remote work and staff are taking materials home to catalog and process. Um, so selectors have continued to order throughout the stay at home order and the library closures and they've been getting shipments for about two and a half weeks now. So they have a lot of, a lot of boxes coming in um, or that are waiting to be, to be delivered. So CERC started accepting returns last week and they started curbside this week. Wow, you guys are all very busy. It sounds like everybody has found potentially like a, a scheduling that is, is working for them. Um, Michelle at Highland Parks is that their team started coming back this week. And again, going with the team model, they have two teams of three people, team A and team B. So one team works Monday, Wednesday, Friday. The other works Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, similar to what McHenry is doing. Oh, and then each week they flip which team works which days. So that seems, that's clever. Uh, so this, they've only planned so far out as June and they're not sure what will happen come July. Um, and they're starting curbside next Monday. Did anyone want to chime in? 
If not, I'll keep reading through these responses. Um, Molly, thanks for chiming in as well. Zion Benton um, has a small tech services. They have two people. So they're alternating days in the building, but also continuing to work at home. They're getting groups back into the building and started their curbside soft launch yesterday, which hopefully went well yesterday, Molly. We were all thinking about you during the CERC meeting. Um, so they will be going live with curbside with the public tomorrow outside the soft launch. Um, Molly, there's a question for you from Kathy in the chat. What do you mean by go live? Here, I'll just chime in. Thank you. Um, <laughs> making Deborah read everything. Um, we are going to announce to the public tomorrow that, um, that they, that curbside is available to them. Right now, what we've been doing is dealing with the holds we had sitting on the hold shelf or anything kind of on the pick list. And we use those people as our guinea pig for our soft launch to kind of work out the kinks in the system. And then tomorrow we are going to push out announcements saying you can place holds and here's how, and then we're gonna open the book drops and that'll all go get pushed out to the public tomorrow. And so our first big day will probably be Saturday. I hope that helps. And I think that you're not alone in taking that approach. A lot of libraries did a similar soft launch where they called the patrons who had holds on the hold shelf since March and then sort of worked out their workflow and their kinks with curbside pickup. Um, so it's a way to ease in before publicizing those services to the community. I can take a turn reading the comments for a while. Thanks. Thanks so, uh, <laughs> Victoria Niles says there are five people on technical services on team three and six on team one. So they have Monday through Thursday hours of 845 till seven. They're going to be paid their full salaries through June 30th and beginning July 1st, it will likely be hours worked equals the hours paid based on their board decision. Um, Lori at Algonquin says they do have a large backlog now. It's a bit overwhelming and she's the only cataloger um, and did not take any materials home. So um, she did do other projects during her time at home. Uh, let's see, Brad at Cary has both technical services people working Monday through Friday and has been receiving materials since the week of May 17th. The library has curbside service starting June 1st and um, Monday through Thursday hours are 10 to 1 and 3 to 6, a Friday and Saturday are 11 to 2. Are there any new comments? Um, how is everyone handling their uh, workload and their backlog? Has it been manageable as you're starting to work? at the library again. I don't know if it's good silence or bad silence. <laughs> uh, Victoria asked in the chat, has anyone received their large order from Ingram yet? I haven't done Ingram, this is Molly again, but I'm also, I'll ask too, um, has anybody got any problems with Baker and Taylor? I have about a dozen invoices from mid-March that were materials that were in transit when we shut down. And while I have those invoices, I've been having trouble getting them to reship those materials in advance of my June 30th year end. Is anybody else having that any trouble with that and had any luck? Hi, it's Victoria. Um, um, Brad, did you, um, when did you tell Ingram to resume shipping? 
and how long did it take um, for you to get your materials? Because we um, told Ingram on that we were back in the building on June 1 and we still haven't received anything yet. So I was just kind of curious. Thank you. Algonquin received a large order from Ingram, which uh, I already got processed last week. Okay, and so when did you tell them you were going live? Um, we went the 18th of um, May. Okay. All right. So it's about on that same time curve. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and Brad chimed in in the chat um, that they told Ingram the week of May 17th and they got it May 27th. And it was a very large order, 31 boxes and 48 pages. That took two days to go through and receive. That's okay, quite yeah. the order. <laughs> Perfect, because we have, they said there's, there's an entire pallet coming, but mm -hmm. um, when I called to check on it, again, it was, it's been over a week, so I just wanted to make sure that, and that seems kind of on par with what everybody experience so if it's the 17th and receive it on the 27th perfect 10 days or thank so. you did anyone want to address molly's issues that she's having with baker and taylor or concerns molly would you like to repeat the question since you've been talking about uh ingram no. yeah we um it, during the shutdown, you know, when we shut down in, in March, apparently there were 12 or 15 boxes that were in the midst of being shipped and got returned to Baker and Taylor. I got invoices from them about that. And I contacted them several weeks ago saying, okay, I've got these 12 to 15 invoices, but I never received a shipment. And they kind of keep going around, oh yeah, I'm sending you over to the customer service department and they'll reach out to you. And I waited a week or so and nothing has shown up. I contacted them again last week and they're like, oh yeah, we're trying to get those shipped back out. I'm like, guys, I've got a June 30th year end, you know, I, and I have these outstanding invoices, which I'm gonna have to explain to my auditor why I've got uh, you know, 12 to 15 invoices that are dated March that may not get paid until July or later. Is anybody else having similar issues and or gotten anywhere with Baker and Taylor about getting reshipments for those things? Molly, this is Anita from um, Lake Villa. We're not having a problem with Baker and Taylor now, but last fall we had some things that were um, returned and it did take a while to clear that stuff up. I think it's either either customer service people that are either that department or else when Baker and Taylor's overwhelmed, they're probably overwhelmed right now. I'm not sure I've got any solution, but we did have that problem with things that were returned a while ago. So I, I feel for you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, if there's any group that can sympathize with Baker and Taylor issues, it's going to be this group. <laughs> and normally, normally it goes really smoothly and, and we're happy, but this one, um, like, and, and it's, like I say, it's, you know, I don't know, 12 or 15 boxes. And so it's not, it's not a small amount and I'm mildly frustrated and going, hey, because I'm coming up against our year end. So anyway, thank you guys. Uh, Kathy from McHenry did chime in in the chat saying that she doesn't know if they're having any invoicing issues from BNT for materials they haven't received. So it sounds like Molly, the issue might be unique to Zion Benton, which is not great news and I'm sorry about that. Um, and Kathy also notes that at McHenry they're doing their best. So Kathy, I think we're all doing our best during this unprecedented time. Um, so they're finishing the materials they had on site before the stay at home order and then are receiving the materials that have recently come in. So they have over 75 boxes uh, in the back part of the building and they've been coordinating to have those brought up to tech when their acquisitions person can go through them. Uh, so it seems like uh, they have been receiving materials from Baker and Taylor.
Feel free to chime in with any questions or comments you have related to work on any topic. Um, the discussion is open to anything at this point. Hi, this is Gretchen Park Ridge. Um, one of the things we changed is initially we were going to wait three days between each person handling the materials and instead we went to uh, wearing masks whenever we're handling materials to help speed up uh, the in-between process so that it can go right away to the next person. I don't know if anybody else has what their PPE policy is for um, working in the building, uh, but it means we're wearing masks for most of the time we're in the building. So um, have you completely eliminated all of the quarantining or is there certain parts of the processing uh, stages that do still have quarantine periods? Um, the only quarantine is when the items, the boxes come in. Um, I think we're uh, waiting one day for that, um, but we, we're not quarantining any of the other times. Um, and we've tried to cut a few steps down so we can go through things quicker and not have as many checks. But um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's tiring to wear that mask all day. And I, I wear glasses, so your glasses sometimes get steamed up or you take off your mask to answer a phone and then you have to remember to put it back on when you're working on the material. So um, not a lot of fun, but uh, it's, it's helping us get the job done. So um, that's, that's what we're doing. Uh, we're not using gloves, uh, just the masks. We have an option if people want to use the gloves, they're certainly welcome to, but there's, you know, um, differing thoughts on how, on how helpful the gloves are and whether they can just be as it, that it's just as good to just wash your hands frequently. So um, we have gone to just the masks. Molly at Zion Bitten commented that masks are required by all staff at all times, unless you are in a private office. And um, Matt commented that masks are required unless you're in a closed office and the only quarantining returned they're only quarantining returned material from members and uh, collection shipments for seven days. Brad at Carey says that they're wearing masks when handling materials. Incoming shipments are being quarantined for around five days. Um, Kim said that all incoming boxes are quarantined for seven days at Zen Benton. Uh, Xiao Chen said that um, they are quarantining the um, materials returned from patrons for seven days, but they are not quarantining the Baker and Taylor items that they're receiving um, or magazines. Um, so Michelle said that at Highland Park, all incoming boxes are being quarantined for seven days. At Morton Grove, they're quarantining for uh, seven days for now. Gil commented that all incoming boxes are being quarantined for seven days. Um, Lori at Algonquin says that they have built in quarantine times due to which technical services staff works uh, alternating days and the um, boxes are dated to help keep track of the shipments. Masks are required in the building except in designated mask optional zones. Gloves are optional but available and they're quarantining return materials for seven days. Lori uh, Northbrook is also quarantining new shipments for seven days before opening the boxes. Hi, this is um, Anita at Lake Villa again. Different subject. Um, I saw that um, the um, meeting schedule had been set for the, all the technical groups for the yes. next year. Did we ever, um, or maybe I missed it, what, uh, what are we doing with the, um, the election, uh, the officers and 
is that still remaining the same for this year as for last year or no we are we are collecting uh, names for people who are interested in uh, being an officer for the next fiscal year. All of our meetings will be held virtually, so um, we will be doing uh, voting um, either um, in a poll or via a form. And we'll uh, discuss that with the, the chairs um, before the meeting. Okay. Uh, we, we have it. If you're interested, we could oh, use volunteers. I, I was just curious, not necessarily interested, but but Maybe um, we could sway you. I I thought we used to vote in like May or June. That's all I was thinking. So I couldn't remember if we had actually decided something different this year or not. I believe for the catalogers, and Rachel, correct me if I'm wrong. We do have a chair for next year, yes. which is Jamie, right? Right, we have a chair for both groups for next year. And Jamie and Penny uh, will be our chairs for catalogers and acquisitions. So I think we're just looking for vice chair, chair elect nominations. And we, have, we have gotten some for CAM, but um, I haven't heard about any nominations for uh, acquisitions yet. Um, but uh, as soon as we can get our, um, schedule emailed to everyone we will start planning on how we're going to handle elections okay great thank you i would say that this is the perfect year to volunteer as secretary because we'll be recording all of the meetings <laughs> so it makes your job a little bit easier so if you've ever been on the fence about volunteering for secretary now's the time you can have a recording to go back to reference so so think about it <laughs> <laughs> and um, as, at some point uh, when we all can meet in person, we will, um, I am going to volunteer Lake Villa so that everybody can come see the new building, which I thought was going to happen this summer, but um, obviously that's not happening. So two people got, got an inside tour um, like two days before we closed, so, which is <laughs> just on the off chance that they asked to come over. So you'll have to guess who that was. <laughs> It is very beautiful. Luckily, we had a CERC meeting or an ILL meeting there before all of this happened. So I feel lucky I got to see it. Um, but as Rachel mentioned, we'll do all virtual meetings until Illinois enters phase five of the Restore Illinois plan. I don't quite know when that will be. Um, but while we remain in, in phase three and then in phase four, we'll, we'll have all of our meetings via Zoom. So hopefully we'll progress through these phases quickly. But um, TBD. You know, um, it might be in interesting, Deborah, if we can explore when we do get back to meeting, if, if there could be a hybrid of a possibility of Zoom or something for some people who can't get to the meeting, uh, and then you would have the recording and maybe include some people who just can't get there in person. I'm I not sure how that would look like, idea. but... Yeah. yeah, I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, if that's something we can manage, especially now we have the infrastructure to do the Zoom meeting since we have our account all set up and everyone's familiar with it. So maybe that's a service we can continue to offer. Good suggestion, Gretchen. We do have some additional comments in chat. Uh, Kathy said that staff do need to wear masks when in communal spaces unless um, they're in a private space. Gloves are required only for people emptying the returns. Um, she said that she's not sure if staff involved in curbside are wearing gloves or not. Materials and technical services are quarantined 72 hours between each person handling and um, they're looking at the uh, workflow to minimize the amount that uh, people are handling any items. Boxes are quarantined for 24 hours and hand washing is strongly encouraged. Um, Kim Nevins had a question. Um, what are the technical services staff prioritizing? Hmm. Uh, Kim answered that they're prioritizing holds and rushes, fiction materials for all ages, for summer reading and video games. And the kit said that he's prioritizing holds. Uh, are, is anyone else interested in answering that question? What the technical service staff is prioritizing? 
Uh, I can answer for Park Ridge. Besides the hodes, we're also, we have battle books and other um, endeavors with the uh, young adult and children's department, um, similar to that, that we're trying to get out uh, the summer reading uh, list for the schools and all that are priorities besides the hodes. Becky asked to uh, repeat the information on the CAM elections. So um, Becky, since we are going to be having uh, virtual meetings, we can have the elections via a form or um, a poll. Um, I'm gonna be investigating how polls will work in Zoom. Um, so um, once we figure out what is the best way to hold them, we will be able to have those elections online. And uh, we do have some additional comments on what's being prioritizing, I mean, what's being prioritized. Uh, Lori said they're prioritizing the reserves and Michelle is prioritizing the rush items, hold and high demand items. Uh, they're only starting to receive deliveries of new materials this week and they will be uh, need to be quarantined. Brad at Carrie's. They're prioritizing the adult fiction and AV and then the adult nonfiction, YA fiction and youth fiction. And Gail said they're prioritizing the hold items um, and they changed their hot picks collection to be holdable. So they are rushing those as well. And there were several comments about the hybrid meeting being a good idea. Yeah, and Molly notes that hybrid meetings are gonna be dependent on the technical, the technology available at the hosting library. Um, so that's something that CCS will have to investigate and figure out a plan for. I do think it's a really good idea. So I'll, I'll pass on the suggestion and we can start troubleshooting now uh, and brainstorming on how we can make that work for all of you. I do agree we're coming from all across our zone, so it might be helpful long term for us to offer hybrid meetings. So good suggestion. Kate commented that they're also prioritizing the AV and adult fiction, but are considering the nonfiction collection low priority until it's browsable again. Are there any uh, other questions or comments? It's going to be a fairly short meeting today. So um, if there are no <laughs> other questions or comments, everyone is welcome to go. Oh, Deborah, you're, you're muted. Um, I'll go ahead and give an update from Governing Board this morning um, about restarting rails delivery and interest CCS lending. So at Governing Board this morning, um, Governing Board voted that all CCS libraries will resume delivery on June 29th. However, we will not resume interest CCS lending and resource sharing. Um, we'll postpone that decision until the July Governing Board meeting. So will allow libraries to resume receiving Rails deliveries, essentially to return items to their home library. So as libraries are accepting returns of materials and getting back items that are belonging to our fellow CCS libraries, we'll resume Rails um, pickup and delivery so that items can be in transit back to their owning library, but we will not resume interest CCS lending. Um, on oh, now we can't hear you anymore. Hear me? No, I can hear you. 
Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know quite where I cut off. I was repeating myself, I think, just to make sure um, my point went across that we'll resume rails delivery as a whole on June 29th, but we will not resume intra CCS lending. So we will not share materials between libraries until a decision is made at the July governing board. Um, so Molly is asking when July governing board is, and let me just check on that date for you, Molly. Uh, it is July 8th. So at least until July 8th, um, patrons will only be able to request materials at their pickup location, which in most cases is their home library. So that's really the only CCS wide update that I had. So does anyone else have any other questions? Um, Anita, again, this is just my meeting, you guys. Um, I'm just wondering, um, going back to the beginning of the meeting when we were talking about the, the cataloging survey, that I was wondering why CCS is considering a centralized cataloging service um, and how would that be the same or different than what Rails is offering already? We are unsure of what Rails intended to um with well intended with their question that they wanted to offer what service they want to offer um, they themselves responded that they're not sure yet about what service they would want to author uh, so the um, interest that we have at CCS is based on the uh, request by several libraries that are interested in having CCS manage centralized cataloging services and so throughout um, the year we are investigating whether it is possible or not. Um, so possible models could be just um, working on specific projects as a library might need us assistance with say just foreign language uh, collections or just local author collections. Um, and then having an option for different tiers, say if one library would want um, complete cataloging assistance and another library would not want any at all, or a tier that would say, um, allow a library to just send original um, cataloging to CCS. So um, right now, um, we are at the process of um, analyzing the data of the survey. We've already completed a literature review and an environmental scan. So part of our environmental scan um, included con contacting the consortia in um, Illinois as well as surrounding states. We got responses from, uh, the, from Wisconsin and New York and Ohio about different models that they have used for centralized cataloging at their consortium level. And um, questions related to um, the different models they have as well as how they charge the member libraries for, um, for the services were included in our environmental scan research. So um, after we've completed our surveys, um, and have analyzed the data, we should be putting together a proposal um, to present a governing board on what types of services and fee structures we would have, um, what we would suggest if we think that it's feasible at the moment. Okay. Yeah, so, so to echo, echo what Rachel said, um, essentially, a number of directors expressed interest in some sort of centralized cataloging services provided by CCS. So it was added to our strategic plan to investigate what that would look like and if there was enough interest across the membership to, for CCS to begin offering some type of service. Um, so we got pushed back a little bit because of COVID-19, um, but Rachel has been working closely with Rebecca to build a survey to gather information from the members, um, which again, we've sent out to directors and many of you have completed that survey with your directors. So thank you all for working and providing your input. Um, we are still waiting for to hear back from about 10 libraries. So we don't have results from that survey yet, but as soon as we do, we'll analyze 
the information we've received back from libraries and present it to governing board. And as we're, um, Rachel mentioned earlier, as needed, we'll send follow up questions to libraries. So at this time, we don't know if CCS will begin offering some type of centralized cataloging services. It's still, we're still waiting to hear feedback from all of you to know if it's something that would be valuable uh, for your library and for the members. <laughs> Kit, Kit says she votes for centralized cataloging of weird self-published stuff from Amazon Create Space. <laughs> so yeah, we can just like have a whole department <laughs> doing that at CCS. <laughs> Good call, Kit. We'll add that to the survey. <laughs> So that was a good question, Nita. If anyone does have any questions, um, you can chat with your director. They should have received that survey if you haven't seen it already. So I'd you know, talk to them to see what their thoughts are. Uh, and if you do have any questions, you can also reach out to Rebecca and she'd be happy to chat with you. <laughs> any other questions for the group or for CCS? Oh, I thought Anita might want to say one more thing, but she muted herself. <laughs> I was trying to mute myself and it didn't work at first. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. All right, well, I think if that's it, we can go ahead and sign off and then we'll hopefully see all of you uh, at our next, I think cataloging meeting is in. Uh, there's a scrap meeting at the end of July. Yes, and we are still looking for nominations to serve on our advisory uh, group committees. So if you are interested in serving on one of this, those committees, we sent out the self-nomination form in last week's CCS News. So we have a couple, in addition to SCRAP, we have a couple of cross-departmental groups, including the user experience advisory group. And then we also have the, um, the database management committee. So we are looking for representation from this squad on, on both of those groups. So feel free to nominate yourself. Okay. Well, if no one has any more questions, then we'll see all of you in August, August 12th. So we'll talk to all of you soon. It was good to see everybody. Thank you.